This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit www.librivox.org. Today's reading is by Chris Mitchell. The Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Book Six. Salut au monde. One. Oh, take my hand, Walt Whitman. Such gliding wonders, such sights and sounds, such joined, unended links each hooked to the next, each answering all, each sharing the earth with all. What widens within you, Walt Whitman? What waves and soils exuding? What climes, what persons and cities are here? Who are the infants, some playing, some slumbering? Who are the girls, who are the married women? Who are the groups of old men going slowly with their arms about each other's necks? What rivers are these? What forests and fruits are these? What are the mountains called that rise so high in the midst? What myriads of dwellings are they filled with dwellers? 2. Within me latitude widens, longitude lengthens, Asia, Africa, Europe, are to the east. America is provided for in the west. Banding the bulge of the earth winds the hot equator. Curiously north and south turn the axis ends. Within me is the longest day. The sun wheels in slanting rings. It does not set for months. Stretched in due time within me the midnight sun just rises above the horizon and sinks again. Within me zones, seas, cataracts, forests, volcanoes, groups, Malaysia, Polynesia, and the great West Indian islands. 3. What do you hear, Walt Whitman? I hear the workman singing and the farmer's wife singing. I hear in the distance the sounds of children and of animals early in the day. I hear emulous shouts of Australians pursuing the wild horse. I hear the Spanish dance with castanets in the chestnut shade to the rebec and guitar. I hear continual echoes from the Thames. I hear fierce French liberty songs. I hear of the Italian boat sculler in the musical recitative of old poems. I hear the locusts in Syria as they strike the grain and grass with the showers of their terrible clouds. I hear the Coptic refrain toward sundown, pensively falling on the breast of the black venerable vast mother, the Nile. I hear the chirp of the Mexican muleteer and the bells of the mule. I hear the Arab muezzin calling from the top of the mosque. I hear the Christian priests at the altars of their churches. I hear the responsive bass and soprano. I hear the cry of the Cossack and the sailor's voice putting to sea at a Kotsk. I hear the wheeze of the slave coffle as the slaves march on, as the husky gangs pass on by twos and threes, fastened together with wrist chains and ankle chains. I hear the Hebrew reading his records and psalms. I hear the rhythmic myths of the Greeks and the strong legends of the Romans. I hear the tale of the divine life and bloody death of the beautiful God the Christ. I hear the Hindu teaching his favorite pupil the loves, wars, adages transmitted safely to this day from poets who wrote three thousand years ago. 4. 
What do you see, Walt Whitman? Who are they you salute, and that one after another salute you? I see a great round wonder rolling through space. I see diminutive farms, hamlets, ruins, graveyards, jails, factories, palaces, hovels, huts of barbarians, tents of nomads upon the surface. I see the shaded part on one side where the sleepers are sleeping, and the sunlit part on the other side. I see the curious rapid change of the light and shade. I see distant lands, as real and near to the inhabitants of them as my land is to me. I see plenteous waters, I see mountain peaks, I see the Sierras of Andes where they range. I see plainly the Himalayas, Kian Shachs, Altes, Gauts. I see the giant pinnacles of Elbrus, Kazbek, Bazarjusi. I see the Styrian Alps and the Karnak Alps. I see the Pyrenees, Balks, Carpathians, and to the north the Dofra fields, and off at sea Mount Hecla. I see Vesuvius and Etna, the mountains of the moon, and the red mountains of Madagascar. I see the Libyan, Arabian, and Asiatic deserts. I see huge, dreadful Arctic and Antarctic icebergs. I see the superior oceans and the inferior ones, the Atlantic and Pacific, the Sea of Mexico, the Brazilian Sea, and the Sea of Peru the waters of Hindustan, the China Sea, and the Gulf of Guinea, the Japan waters, the beautiful bay of Nagasaki landlocked in its mountains, the spread of the Baltic, Caspian, Bothnia, the British shores, and the Bay of Biscay, the clear-sunned Mediterranean, and from one to another of its islands, the white sea, and the sea around Greenland. I behold the mariners of the world, some are in storms, some in the night with the watch on the lookout, some drifting helplessly, some with contagious diseases. I behold the sail and steamships of the world, some in clusters in port, some on their voyages. Some double the Cape of Storms, some Cape Verde, others Capes Guardafui, Bon or Bajadore. Others Dondra Head, others past the Straits of Sunda, others Cape Lopatka, others Bering Straits. Others Cape Horn, others sail the Gulf of Mexico or along Cuba or Haiti others Hudson's Bay or Baffin's Bay, others pass the Straits of Dover, others enter the Wash, others the Firth of Solway, others round Cape Clear, others the Land's End, others traverse the Zyder Zee or the Scheld, others as comers and goers at Gibraltar or the Dardanelles, Others sternly push their way through the northern winter packs. Others descend or ascend the Obi or the Lena. Others the Niger or the Congo. Others the Indus, the Burmaputer, and Cambodia. Others wait steamed up ready to start in the ports of Australia. Wait at Liverpool, Glasgow, Dublin, Marseille, Lisbon, Naples, Hamburg, Bremen, Bordeaux, The Hague, Copenhagen, wait at Valparaiso, Rio Janeiro, Panama. 5. I see the tracks of the railroads of the earth. I see them in Great Britain, I see them in Europe, I see them in Asia and in Africa. I see the electric telegraphs of the earth. I see the filaments of the news of the wars, deaths, losses, gains, passions of my race. I see the long river stripes of the earth. I see the Amazon and the Paraguay. 
I see the four great rivers of China, the Amur, the Yellow River, the Yangtze, and the Pearl. I see where the Seine flows, and where the Danube, the Loire, the Rhone, and the Guadalquiver flow. I see the windings of the Volga, the Dnieper, the Oder. I see the Tuscan going down the Arno, and the Venetian along the Po. I see the Greek seamen sailing out of Aegina Bay. 6. I see the site of the old empire of Assyria, and that of Persia, and that of India. I see the falling of the Ganges over the high rim of Saukara. I see the place of the idea of the deity, incarnated by avatars in human forms. I see the spots of the successions of priests on the earth, oracles, sacrificers, brahmins, Sabians, Lamas, Monks, Muftis, Exhorters. I see where Druids walked the groves of Mona. I see the mistletoe and the vervain. I see the temples of the deaths of the bodies of gods. I see the old signifiers. I see Christ eating the bread of his last supper in the midst of youths and old persons. I see where the strong, divine young man, the Hercules, toiled faithfully and long, and then died. I see the place of the innocent, rich life, and hapless fate of the beautiful, nocturnal sun, the full-limbed Bacchus. I see Nep blooming, dressed in blue, with the crown of feathers on his head. I see Hermes, unsuspected, dying, well-beloved, saying to the people, Do not weep for me. This is not my true country. I have lived banished from my true country. I now go back there. I return to the celestial sphere, where every one goes in his turn. 7. I see the battlefields of the earth. Grass grows upon them and blossoms and corn. I see the tracks of ancient and modern expeditions. I see the nameless masonries, venerable messages of the unknown events, heroes, records of the earth. I see the places of the sagas. I see pine trees and fir trees torn by northern blasts. I see granite boulders and cliffs. I see green meadows and lakes. I see the burial cairns of Scandinavian warriors. I see them raised high with stones by the marge of restless oceans, that the dead men's spirits, when they wearied of their quiet graves, might rise up through the mounds and gaze on the tossing billows, and be refreshed by storms, immensity, liberty, action. I see the steppes of Asia, I see the tumuli of Mongolia, I see the tents of Kalmuks and Baskirs. I see the nomadic tribes with herds of oxen and cows. I see the tablelands notched with ravines. I see the jungles and deserts. I see the camel, the wild steed, the bustard, the fat-tailed sheep, the antelope, and the burrowing wolf. I see the highlands of Abyssinia. I see flocks of goats feeding, and see the fig tree, tamarind, date, and see fields of teff wheat and places of verdure and gold. I see the Brazilian vaquero. I see the Bolivian ascending Mount Sorata. I see the Waco crossing the plains. I see the incomparable rider of horses with his lasso on his arm. I see over the pampas the pursuit of wild cattle for their hides. 8. I see the regions of snow and ice. I see the sharp-eyed Samoyed and the Finn. 
I see the seal-seeker in his boat poising his lance. I see the Siberian on his slight-built sledge drawn by dogs. I see the porpoise-hunters. I see the whale-crews of the South Pacific and the North Atlantic. I see the cliffs, glaciers, torrents, valleys of Switzerland. I mark the long winters and the isolation. I see the cities of the earth and make myself at random a part of them. I am a real Parisian. I am a habitant of Vienna, St. Petersburg, Berlin, Constantinople. I am of Adelaide, Sydney, Melbourne. I am of London, Manchester, Bristol, Edinburgh, Limerick. I am of Madrid, Cadiz, Barcelona, Oporto, Lyon, Brussels, Bern, Frankfurt, Stuttgart, Turin, Florence. I belong in Moscow, Krakow, Warsaw, or northward in Christiania, or Stockholm, or in Siberian Irkutsk, or in some street in Iceland. I descend upon all those cities, and rise from them again. 10. I see vapors exhaling from unexplored countries. I see the savage types, the bow and arrow, the poisoned splint, the fetish, and the obi. I see African and Asiatic towns. I see Algiers, Tripoli, Dern, Mogadore, Timbuktu, Monrovia. I see the swarms of Peking, Canton, Benares, Delhi, Calcutta, Tokyo. I see the Kruman in his hut, and the Dahaman and the Ashanti man in their huts. I see the Turk smoking opium in Aleppo. I see the picturesque crowds at the fairs of Kiva and those of Herat. I see Tehran, I see Muscat and Medina, and the intervening sands, see the caravans toiling onward. I see Egypt and the Egyptians, I see the pyramids and obelisks, I look on chiseled histories, records of conquering kings, dynasties, cut in slabs of sandstone or on granite blocks. I see at Memphis mummy pits containing mummies embalmed, swathed in linen cloth, lying there many centuries. I look on the fallen Theban, the large bald eyes, the side-drooping neck, the hands folded across the breast. I see all the menials of the earth, laboring, I see all the prisoners in the prisons, I see the defective human bodies of the earth, the blind, the deaf and dumb, idiots, hunchbacks, lunatics, the pirates, thieves, betrayers, murderers, slave-makers of the earth, the helpless infants, and the helpless old men and women. I see male and female everywhere, I see the serene brotherhood of the philosophes, I see the constructiveness of my race. I see the results of the perseverance and industry of my race. I see ranks, colors, barbarisms, civilizations. I go among them. I mix indiscriminately. And I salute all the inhabitants of the earth. 11. You, whoever you are, you daughter or son of England, you of the mighty Slavic tribes and empires, you Rus in Russia, you dim-descended, black, divine-souled African, large, fine-headed, nobly formed, superbly destined, on equal terms with me, you Norwegian, Swede, Dane, Icelander, you Prussian, you Spaniard of Spain, you Portuguese, you Frenchwoman and Frenchman of France, 
you Belga, you liberty lover of the Netherlands, you stock whence I myself have descended, you sturdy Austrian, you Lombard, Hun, Bohemian, farmer of Styria, you neighbor of the Danube, you working man of the Rhine, the Elba, or the Vesser, you working woman too, you Sardinian, you Bavarian, Swabian, Saxon, Wallachian, Bulgarian, you Roman, Neapolitan, you Greek, you lithe matador in the arena at Seville, you mountaineer living lawlessly on the Taurus or Caucasus, you bock horseherd watching your mares and stallions feeding, you beautiful bodied Persian at full speed in the saddle shooting arrows to the mark, you Chinaman and Chinawoman of China, you Tartar of Tartary, you women of the earth subordinated at your tasks, you Jew journeying in your old age through every risk to stand once on Syrian ground, you other Jews waiting in all lands for your Messiah, you thoughtful Armenian pondering by some stream of the Euphrates, you peering amid the ruins of Nineveh, you ascending Mount Ararat, you foot-worn pilgrim welcoming the faraway sparkle of the minarets of Mecca, you sheiks along the stretch from Suez to Bab el Mandeb, ruling your families and tribes, you olive grower tending your fruit on fields of Nazareth, Damascus, or Lake Tiberius, you Tibet trader on the wide inland or bargaining in the shops of Lhasa, you Japanese man or woman, you liver in Madagascar, Ceylon, Sumatra, Borneo, all you continentals of Asia, Africa, Europe, Australia, indifferent of place, all you on the numberless islands of the archipelagos of the sea, and you of centuries hence when you listen to me, and you each and everywhere whom I specify not, but include just the same, health to you, good will to you all from me and America sent. Each of us inevitable, each of us limitless, each of us with his or her right upon the earth, each of us allowed the eternal purports of the earth, each of us here as divinely as any is here. 12. You Hottentot with clicking palate, you woolly-haired hordes, you owned persons dropping sweat drops or blood drops, you human forms with the fathomless, ever-impressive countenances of brutes, you poor Kobu, whom the meanest of the rest look down upon for all your glimmering language and spirituality, you dwarfed Kamshatkan, Greenlander, Lap, you Austral Negro, naked, red, sooty, with protrusive lip, groveling, seeking your food. You Kafra, Berber, Sudanese, you haggard, uncouth, untutored Bedoue. You plague swarms in Madras, Nankin, Kabul, Cairo. You benighted roamer of Amazonia, you Patagonian, you Fiji man, I do not prefer others so very much before you either. I do not say one word against you. Away back there where you stand, you will come forward in due time to my side. 13. My spirit has passed in compassion and determination around the whole earth. 
I have looked for equals and lovers, and found them ready for me in all lands. I think some divine report has equalized me with them. You vapors, I think I have risen with you, moved away to distant continents, and fallen down there, for reasons, I think I have blown with you, you winds. You waters, I have fingered every shore with you. I have run through what any river or strait of the globe has run through. I have taken my stand on the bases of peninsulas and on the high embedded rocks, to cry thence, What cities the light or warmth penetrates, I penetrate those cities myself. All islands to which birds wing their way, I wing my way myself. Toward you all, in America's name, I raise high the perpendicular hand, I make the signal, to remain after me in sight forever, for all the haunts and homes of men. Here ends Book Six. Book Seven Song of the Open Road. One Afoot and light hearted, I take to the open road, healthy, free, the world before me, the long brown path before me leading wherever I choose. Henceforth, I ask not good fortune, I myself am good fortune. Henceforth I whimper no more, postpone no more, need nothing, done with indoor complaints, libraries, querulous criticisms, strong and content I travel the open road. The earth, that is sufficient. I do not want the constellations any nearer. I know they are very well where they are. I know they suffice for those who belong to them. Still here I carry my old delicious burdens. I carry them, men and women, I carry them with me wherever I go. I swear it is impossible for me to get rid of them. I am filled with them, and I will fill them in return. 2. You road I enter upon and look around, I believe you are not all that is here. I believe that much unseen is also here. Hear the profound lesson of reception, nor preference nor denial, the black with his woolly head, the felon, the diseased, the illiterate person, are not denied. The birth, the hasting after the physician, the beggar's tramp, the drunkard's stagger, the laughing party of mechanics. The escaped youth, the rich person's carriage, the fop, the eloping couple. The early market man, the hearse, the moving of furniture into the town, the return back from the town. They pass, I also pass, anything passes, None can be interdicted. None but are accepted. None but shall be dear to me. 3. You air that serves me with breath to speak. You objects that call from diffusion my meanings and give them shape. You light that wraps me and all things in delicate, equable showers. You paths worn in the irregular hollows by the roadsides. I believe you are latent with unseen existences. You are so dear to me. You flagged walks of the cities. You strong curbs at the edges. You ferries. You planks and posts of wharves. You timber-lined side. You distant ships. You rows of houses, you window-pierced facades, you roofs, you porches and entrances, 
you copings and iron guards, you windows whose transparent shells might expose so much, you doors and ascending steps, you arches, you gray stones of interminable pavements, you trodden crossings. From all that has touched you I believe you have imparted to yourselves, and now would impart the same secretly to me. From the living and the dead you have peopled your impassive surfaces, and the spirits thereof would be evident and amicable with me. 4. The earth expanding right hand and left hand, the picture alive, every part in its best light, the music falling in where it is wanted, and stopping where it is not wanted, the cheerful voice of the public road, the gay fresh sentiment of the road. O oh, highway I travel, do you say to me, do not leave me? Do you say, venture not, if you leave me you are lost? Do you say, I am already prepared, I am well beaten and undenied, adhere to me? O oh, public road, I say back I am not afraid to leave you, yet I love you. You express me better than I can express myself. You shall be more to me than my poem. I think heroic deeds were all conceived in the open air, and all free poems also. I think I could stop here myself and do miracles. I think whatever I shall meet on the road I shall like, and whoever beholds me shall like me. I think whoever I see must be happy. 5. From this hour I ordain myself loosed of limits and imaginary lines, going where I list, my own master total and absolute, listening to others, considering well what they say, pausing, searching, receiving, contemplating, gently but with undeniable will, divesting myself of the holds that would hold me. I inhale great draughts of space. The east and the west are mine, and the north and the south are mine. I am larger, better than I thought. I did not know I held so much goodness. All seems beautiful to me, can repeat over to men and women, You have done such good to me, I would do the same to you. I will recruit for myself and you as I go. I will scatter myself among men and women as I go. I will toss a new gladness and roughness among them. Whoever denies me it shall not trouble me. Whoever accepts me, he or she shall be blessed and shall bless me. 6. Now if a thousand perfect men were to appear, it would not amaze me. Now if a thousand beautiful forms of women appeared, it would not astonish me. Now I see the secret of the making of the best persons. It is to grow in the open air and to eat and sleep with the earth. Here a great personal deed has room. Such a deed seizes upon the hearts of the whole race of men. Its effusion of strength and will overwhelms law and mocks all authority and all argument against it. Here is the test of wisdom. Wisdom is not finally tested in schools. Wisdom cannot be passed from one having it to another not having it. Wisdom is of the soul, is not susceptible of proof, is its own proof, applies to all stages and objects and qualities, and is content, is the certainty of the reality and immorality of things, and the excellence of things. Something there is in the float of the sight of things that provokes it out of the soul. 
Now I re-examine philosophies and religions. They may prove well in lecture rooms, yet not prove at all under the spacious clouds and along the landscape and flowing currents. Here is realization. Here is a man tallied. He realizes here what he has in him. The past, the future, majesty, love, if they are vacant of you, you are vacant of them. Only the kernel of every object nourishes. Where is he who tears off the husks for you and me? Where is he that undoes stratagems and envelopes for you and me? Here is adhesiveness. It is not previously fashioned. It is apropos. Do you know what it is as you pass to be loved by strangers? Do you know the talk of those turning eyeballs? 7. Here is the efflux of the soul. The efflux of the soul comes from within, through embowered gates, ever-provoking questions. These yearnings, why are they? These thoughts in the darkness, why are they? Why are there men and women that while they are nigh me the sunlight expands my blood? Why, when they leave me, do my penance of joy sink flat and lank? Why are there trees I never walk under but large and melodious thoughts descend upon me? I think they hang there winter and summer on those trees and always drop fruit as I pass. What is it I interchange so suddenly with strangers? What with some driver as I ride on the seat by his side? What with some fisherman drawing his seine by the shore as I walk by and pause? What gives me to be free to a woman's and man's good will? What gives them to be free to mine? 8. The efflux of the soul is happiness, here is happiness. I think it pervades the open air, waiting at all times. Now it flows unto us, we are rightly charged. Here rises the fluid and attaching character. The fluid and attaching character is the freshness and sweetness of man and woman. The herbs of the morning sprout no fresher and sweeter every day out of the roots of themselves than it sprouts fresh and sweet continually out of itself. Toward the fluid and attaching character exudes the sweat of the love of young and old. From it falls distilled the charm that mocks beauty and attainments. Toward it heaves the shuddering longing ache of contact. 9. Alon, whoever you are, come travel with me. Traveling with me you find what never tires. The earth never tires. The earth is rude, silent, incomprehensible at first. Nature is rude and incomprehensible at first. Be not discouraged, keep on, there are divine things well enveloped. I swear to you there are divine things more beautiful than words can tell. Allons, we must not stop here. However sweet these laid-up stores, however convenient this dwelling, we cannot remain here. However sheltered this port, and however calm these waters, we must not anchor here. However welcome the hospitality that surrounds us, we are permitted to receive it but a little while. 10. Alon, the inducements shall be greater. We will sail pathless and wild seas. We will go where winds blow, waves dash, and the Yankee clipper speeds by under full sail. Alon, with power, liberty, the earth, the elements, health, defiance, gaiety, self-esteem, curiosity, alone from all formules. From your formules, O oh, bat-eyed and materialistic priests. 
the stale cadaver blocks up the passage, the burial waits no longer. Alon, yet take warning, he traveling with me needs the best blood, fuse, endurance, none may come to the trial till he or she bring courage and health. Come not here if you have already spent the best of yourself. Only those may come who come in sweet and determined bodies. No diseased person, no rum drinker, or venereal taint is permitted here. I and mine do not convince by arguments, similes, rhymes. We convince by our presence. 11. Listen, I will be honest with you. I do not offer the old smooth prizes, but offer rough new prizes. These are the days that must happen to you. You shall not heap up what is called riches. You shall scatter with lavish hand all that you earn or achieve. You but arrive at the city to which you were destined. You hardly settle yourself to satisfaction before you are called by an irresistible call to depart. You shall be treated to the ironical smiles and mockings of those who remain behind you. What beckonings of love you receive you shall only answer with passionate kisses of parting. You shall not allow the hold of those who spread their reached hands toward you. 12. Alon, after the great companions, and to belong to them. They too are on the road. They are the swift and majestic men. They are the greatest women. Enjoyers of calms of seas and storms of seas. Sailors of many a ship, walkers of many a mile of land, habitues of many distant countries, habitues of far distant dwellings, trusters of men and women, observers of cities, solitary toilers, pausers and contemplators of tufts, blossoms, shells of the shore, dancers at wedding dances, kissers of brides, tender helpers of children, bearers of children, soldiers of revolts, standers by gaping graves, lowers down of coffins, journeyers over consecutive seasons, over the years, the curious years, each emerging from that which preceded it. Journeyers as with companions, namely their own diverse phases. Fourth steppers from the latent unrealized baby days. Journeyers gaily with their own youth, journeyers with their bearded and well-grained manhood. Journeyers with their womanhood, ample unsurpassed content. Journeyers with their own sublime old age of manhood or womanhood. Old age, calm, expanded, broad with the haughty breadth of the universe. Old age, flowing free with the delicious nearby freedom of death. 13. Alon, to that which is endless as it was beginningless. To undergo much, tramps of days, rests of nights, to merge all in the travel they tend to, and the days and nights they tend to. Again to merge them in the start of superior journeys, to see nothing anywhere but what you may reach it and pass it, to conceive no time, however distant, but what you may reach it and pass it. To look up or down no road, but it stretches and waits for you. However long, but it stretches and waits for you. To see no being, not gods or any, but you also go thither. To see no possession, but you may possess it. 
enjoying all without labor or purchase, abstracting the feast yet not abstracting one particle of it, to take the best of the farmer's farm and the rich man's elegant villa, and the chaste blessings of the well-married couple, and the fruits of orchards and flowers of gardens, to take to your use out of the compact cities as you pass through, to carry buildings and streets with you afterward wherever you go, to gather the minds of men out of their brains as you encounter them, to gather the love out of their hearts, to take your lovers on the road with you for all that you leave them behind you, to know the universe itself as a road, as many roads, as roads for traveling souls all parts away for the progress of souls, all religion, all solid things, arts, governments, all that was or is apparent upon this globe or any globe, falls into niches and corners before the procession of souls along the grand roads of the universe, of the progress of the souls of men and women along the grand roads of the universe, all other progress is the needed emblem and sustenance. Forever alive, forever forward, stately, solemn, sad, withdrawn, baffled, mad, turbulent, feeble, dissatisfied, desperate, proud, fond, sick, accepted by men, rejected by men. They go, they go. I know that they go, but I know not where they go, but I know that they go toward the best, toward something great. Whoever you are, come forth, or man or woman come forth. You must not stay sleeping and dallying there in the house, though you built it, or though it has been built for you. Out of the dark confinement, out from behind the screen, it is useless to protest. I know all and expose it. Behold, through you as bad as the rest, through the laughter, dancing, dining, supping of people, inside of dresses and ornaments, inside of those washed and trimmed faces. Behold, a secret silent loathing and despair. No husband, no wife, no friend, trusted to hear the confession, another self, a duplicate of every one, skulking and hiding it goes, formless and wordless through the streets of the cities, polite and bland in the parlors, in the cars of railroads, in steamboats, in the public assembly, home to the houses of men and women, at the table, in the bedroom, everywhere. Smartly attired, countenance smiling, form upright, death under the breast bones, hell under the skull bones. Under the broadcloth and gloves, under the ribbons and artificial flowers, keeping fair with the customs, speaking not a syllable of itself, speaking of anything else, but never of itself. 14. Alone, through struggles and wars, the goal that was named cannot be countermanded. Have the past struggles succeeded? What has succeeded? Yourself? Your nation? Nature? Now understand me well, it is provided in the essence of things that from any fruition of success, no matter what, shall come forth something to make a greater struggle necessary. My call is the call of battle. I nourish active rebellion. He going with me must go well armed. He going with me goes often with spare diet, poverty, angry enemies, desertions. 15. Alone. The road is before us. It is safe. I have tried it. 
my own feet have tried it well, be not detained. Let the paper remain on the desk unwritten, and the book on the shelf unopened. Let the tools remain in the workshop, let the money remain unearned. Let the school stand, mind not the cry of the teacher. Let the preacher preach in his pulpit, let the lawyer plead in the court, and the judge expound the law. Camarado, I give you my hand, I give you my love more precious than money, I give you myself before preaching or law. Will you give me yourself? Will you come travel with me? Shall we stick by each other as long as we live? Here ends Book 7